Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to read the energy graph and the trip graph. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, so the energy graph is a very useful tool um, if you're trying to just, you know, figure out how much energy you're using or if you're going on a trip and you want to try and plan it out. Uh, this is a very useful tool. So basically what they have is they have two different types. They've got average and instant. So I'm just going to quickly kind of go over instant because it's not really that useful. So basically what instant does is it takes like your last watt hour per mile and it tries to calculate it based on that, based on 30, 15, and five miles. So this kind of isn't very useful. So that's why I'm not really gonna go over it at all. So that's basically what it does. It just takes your, your very last watt hour per mile and calculates based on that. Now average range makes a lot more sense because they have it in 30 miles, 15, and five miles. So, <clears throat> so what it does is, let's just do 30 and then 15 and five are basically the same thing over a shorter uh, my, uh, distance. So basically 30 miles, so what it does is for the last 30 miles, this is my graph for the last 30 miles of energy. So over the last 30 miles, uh, my average is 207 watt hours per mile. So that's, you can see that here by the dotted line and the solid line is basically your baseline. So if I were to stay at 207 watt hours per mile um, for, you know, until the battery runs out, basically it's projecting that I have a 236 mile range at this watt hour per mile. Now, this whole up and down thing is obviously your energy usage. So when you see ups, that's probably like, so let's see, where's the highest? So let's take here, the highest, which is about, hmm, about 450 watt hours per mile up here at the peak. And so that's probably when I was accelerating. Um, I didn't romp it any, I should have, just so you could see how high it would go and then see how far, how fast it would drop when you let off the gas and uh, or accelerator and the regen braking does its thing. But I didn't really, I didn't romp it for the last 30 miles. I uh, just drove, drove normally. And so up here is probably where I was just accelerating from a stop. Because obviously when you're at a dead stop and you need to start going, that's when you use the most energy um, to get the car moving and all that stuff. So <clears throat> as you can see, it's about 450 watt hours per mile up here. And then it drops a little bit and stays a little bit flat. So that's probably just me driving, you know, maybe street four miles an hour or something like that. And then... <clears throat> see how it drops really rapidly down here. So that's gotta be where I was letting, I probably let off the pedal like all the way and regen was probably almost fully working or pretty close to it. And you'll see it drops almost down to zero. So your zero line here. So that's me getting battery back, probably coming to a stop. Obviously I'm not using my brakes if I'm doing, using regen, which is great because not wearing out my brakes and I'm recharging the battery. So that's pretty much the energy graph for 30 miles. Now 15 is the same thing as the last 15 miles. My average is 227 watt hours a mile. And so obviously that's a higher uh, energy usage per mile. So my projected range is obviously gonna be lower. Five miles was 189. So I didn't drive very hard at all in the last <clears throat> uh, five miles. So you can see the green here where I actually got back, like gained back uh, battery. Um, and so obviously it's lower watt hour per mile. Your projected range is 258 miles. So I guess <laughs> the farther we go out, the, the well, no, that's not true because 227, so 207. So anyways, <clears throat> so that's that's the projected. Now, if we look at the trip, um, the trip tab, this is actually pretty useful as well. So basically right now I have a trip that is going 19 miles away from here. And so <clears throat> what this shows you is, hey, based on, that 19 miles, um, the Tesla maps have geography data. And so what it does is it takes average speed, um, I believe temperature, it definitely takes an account elevation to project this 19 mile you know, route that I'm going, how much energy I'm gonna use. So it would have been, so basically that's how it starts this. So you're gonna see it like this and that's how it basically starts the trip and so what I wanted to do was I wanted to see if it calc if it calculates off of your average here on your consumption. I found that it doesn't actually do that. Um, like I said, because it's taking this based on 
general data that it has. So if we take, <clears throat> it's a 19 mile trip. So 81 to 73 is 8% of the battery. So I have a mid range. And so that I have a 62 kilowatt hour battery. So if we take, if we take 8% of 62 kilowatt hours, that's basically five kilowatt hours of battery that I'd be using to do this trip. Now, if you take the 207, let's just take the 30 mile an hour, 30 mile range. We take your average of 207 miles times 19 miles that we're driving. It comes out to be four, four kilowatt hours, basically. So I'm basically off one kilowatt hour. So <clears throat> that's where I was, that's where I can tell that basically this average isn't exactly connected to the trip. So this trip is basically just based on, like I said, uh, data that it has in the system. <clears throat> so what will happen is, so this is the, you know, the zoomed out portion basically for the entire 19 mile trip here. And you can see the entire battery and even some minus battery. So basically this line is almost flat because, you know, I have 260 miles, 19 miles out of a 260 mile battery is not very much. So if we zoom in here, <clears throat> So now it's basically the whole 19 miles, but now it's only showing a portion of the battery. So it's showing the 82% all the way down to 70%. So now you're gonna see an actual graph, um, which makes sense. So it's gonna be a downward slope because obviously we're using energy. And so if you remember my calculation, I calculated that <clears throat> the 8% is gonna be five kilowatt hours, but if you take the 207 average, it was only four. And so basically what that tells us is that this graph here is probably going to be more accurate because it has hills in mind, whereas my average doesn't have hills. It just had whatever the last 30 miles I drove was. So you can see those here. So particularly this one, see how it goes up in battery. And so that's got to be where I'm driving on this particular route where I'm driving down a hill. So this, I mean, it doesn't, it's probably because this energy is not spread out enough, but probably around here you would see that it would drop more drastically a little bit and then as i you know go down the hill and regen battery i'm going to gain battery back so one other thing i wanted to mention about this is so that's basically your trip how this works this is pretty useful if you're going to go on like a long trip because what you can do is you can look at your actual trip here and you can see what well this part here but also you want to use your consumption so basically you're going to have this area here and you're obviously going to have you know an algorithm that's telling you hey you have this much battery left and you know this is how far you can get what you can also do at the same time is use your con consumption page and and the trip page and you can kind of you can kind of see your projected range so obviously you want your projected range to be higher than here so that way you don't run out of battery by the time you get to your next charger and so that's where this this information is very useful or can be very useful. So this is a, a great way to gauge using your trip and consumption graphs in a, you know, in addition to actually using how much battery the car is telling you that you have to be able to gauge, hey, do I need to stop at this supercharger or can I keep going based on your projected here and how much battery you have. So what I did is I actually drove a small trip of this route. So this is the, the gray line and the actual line that I'm talking about. So basically the gray line is the, the initial uh, the initial graph or the, the average or the prediction that the car based on its averages and the data that it has in the system, um, that's the, the projected line. And so basically as I started driving, you can see that there's a new green line here that has the actual, like it's basically, this is based on my actual driving data. And so, um, Basically what it's doing is now that I'm driving and I actually drove a little bit slower on purpose, that way you could see it like this. And so basically my new green line here is basically going to be using less energy than the predicted line because I obviously drove a little bit slower, which means I'm using less energy than what the average um, projected uh, line thinks that I'll, I'll be using. So basically if I were to keep on this slow kind of energy usage, not slow energy usage, but slow pace that I'm driving, then this line should widen, meaning that basically I'm not gonna be using as much energy. And so instead of ending up at 73, maybe we'll end up at 75% battery, obviously, because I use less energy. So you can also see here, here's, 
Here's the white line, so that's where I am in the trip. I drove a whole mile out of this 19 mile trip. So your start point is obviously gonna be zero. And then here is your white line where that's where I'm at. Now I drove a whole mile of this trip. <clears throat> Another thing to note too is that let's say the lines are flipped and you're using more energy than the projected, uh, the projected initial line. If your consumption here, your projected range is less than the battery you have, that's obviously not good. So there's two ways you can kind of fix that. Either get to a supercharger that's closer or what you can do is just slow down. So basically that's kind of almost always the answer with these uh, with our EVs is basically if you are using too much energy and you wanna basically stretch your range farther than you normally would driving normal, you wanna slow down. So especially on the freeway too, anything over 65, the battery gets kind of roasted really fast because of all the wind resistance and things like that. So if you slow down to 65 or maybe even 60, that's really gonna increase your range because there's not so much wind resistance. So that's kind of a trick you can do to extend your battery if you really need it and you really wanna to go to some supercharger or you don't wanna stop or whatever your reason is, that's how you can extend your battery. So knowing this information, next time you go on a trip, even if a short one, you could use this do you think using this would be helpful information for you to gauge when you need to charge or not? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.